Hello and welcome to today's Lunch Bite. Microsoft Outlook. Tasks. Outlook's best kept secret. Presented by Log On to Learn. In this Lunch Bite, we will look at how to create and track tasks. In Outlook 2010, we have two different types of tasks we can use. Follow-up tasks and tasks. Follow-up tasks are used to mark an item that requires some sort of action in the future. An example of that would be a follow-up on an email. Tasks are used to track something that needs to be done. You can assign a task, make a task as a reoccurrence, and assign a start and end time. This requires more setup time than the follow-up task, but gives you much more flexibility. And let's take a look at the differences between the two tasks, whether it's going to be our follow-up or if it's going to be our task. And really, it depends on what you're trying to do. So think of Outlook as your personal organizer. You've got your emails for your contacting people. You've got your calendar to kind of keep you in track as far as your appointments and your meetings. Well, tasks are really like to-do lists. But whether it's just going to be a quick little marking or it's something that maybe we have to track and, and we want to keep some information uh, in a form that we can we can look at and go back and see later. If you're looking at the let's say just the mail interface here as we're, we're working in the Outlook, you'll see that over in the right area in 2007 and in 2010, Microsoft added this to-do bar. And this to-do bar has three parts. It has a date navigator, which you can navigate out to a calendar date, upcoming calendar appointments, and our follow-up or our task list here. And this is a great way to monitor your task, and we'll get to this in just a minute. We also have the follow-up flag here in this interface. And as we move throughout the interface, let's say we go to our calendar area, we also have a task location here as well to help us follow up on those tasks, those to-do lists that we want to follow up on, and what day and time we need to do that. But as we move into task, then you get into the, the task interface part of Outlook. And this is where we can go ahead and really manage the task. So we'll get into the new task form in just a few minutes where we can go ahead and assign a task with much more detail. We could reoccur a task, so over a period of time, maybe you have a monthly report or something like that that you have to do. And yeah, you may put it on your calendar, and a lot of people do that, but really it's kind of like a t task, and it, and it probably would be best served if it was in the task area. But a lot of people haven't used the task. They're comfortable with the email, they're comfortable with the calendar, but the task, eh, they just don't really know what that's all about. So we'll get into this. There's several different tabs up here, and we'll talk about managing, maybe assigning a task to someone, and monitoring that task as well. So I'm going to go back to the mailbox here, and I'm going to start with just the basic follow-up task. I use this all the time. I get a pile of emails every day. Certain emails are more important than other emails. So in this case, how do I mark them or prioritize them? Well, what I do is I use the follow-up flag. Now, not only when you click on or mark one of these emails for follow-up do you see the follow-up flag, but as that email kind of disappears and goes off the screen down here, you're still going to be able to see that task because it's going to be over here on the right. It's going to be when you're in your calendar view, and it's going to be available when you're in your task list and location of Outlook. So no matter where you go, your task is going to follow you. Now, to mark a task, as far as to follow up on an email, we have several different options here. One is I'm in the reading pane view, so you can see the split screen of, of me looking at my emails and reading them, but you could also double click and open the email message form, which I'll do in just a minute as well. But if you are in this view, you can simply see the little flags along the right here. And if you've used flags before in earlier versions of Outlook, you know that when you right clicked, you had a bunch of different color flags that you could apply and, and kind of then sort by that and, and just show certain emails based off from those different color flags. Well, they've kind of changed that a little bit and now they're more task based. So when I right click, let's say I have to follow up on this class that I'm going to be taking here, I'm going to right click. Now, there is a difference between right and left click. Left click, by the way, is just going to mark a default follow-up date, which is today. That can be changed, and I'll show you where to do that. But if you right click, you get a menu of options. And from those menus of options, take a look at what we've got today, tomorrow, this week, next week. And notice as we, as we go out further, the time-wise, we're out further, that the flag is a little lighter. It's not as bright red. And that's because 
the due date is out there a little ways. As we get closer to that due date, that flag will change color and then will be bright red. If our task or follow up, let's say we didn't follow up and the date has now come and gone, then what you're going to find is this task right here will be in red. Not only will we have a bright red flag, but we'll also have whatever the text is here in bright red telling you that this has gone above and over the date that you wanted to follow up on it. We also have some other great options. Custom allows you to do a date and time. You can choose your own. Add reminder if you want a reminder window to pop up and just let you know that you said that you wanted to follow up on this particular email or task uh, at a particular date and time. So this is a really quick way of setting and prioritizing your emails very, very quickly. Now this is one that I use all the time, the Mark Complete. I love this one. So as I'm reading an email, let's say the conversation has ended. We've gone back and forth a couple of times. I didn't really file it where I should, but I'm just kind of leaving it in my inbox at this point. But rather than have to you know, view it and, and discover that yes, in fact, we are done with this conversation, I will mark it complete. And then that way I know that at some point in time, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag that to a folder or delete it or whatever I need to do with that particular email. Clear flag will certainly clear whatever flag or flags you have on your, your particular, in this case, email. And then set your quick click. Now your quick click is where you can go in there and if you decide you just wanna left click. So maybe you have a situation where things come in and within 24 hours or 48 hours you have to respond. And these are very important emails. So what you want to do is just quickly left click on your emails and mark them so that you uh, will follow up on those tasks in that particular period of time. And if you look at the drop down, these are some of the options that you can set. I do like the complete and that might be an option for you as well. So as you're done with the email, if you're not really great at filing them and you just kind of leave them sitting there, maybe just left clicking on that and getting that nice little complete check mark uh, there will be very helpful so you don't have to go in there and read that email again and waste some extra time. So those are just some of the options you have there. Again, right clicking. Now as I move this, I'll do this one as tomorrow. Let's say tomorrow I have to follow up on this particular email that Dan sent me. And take a look down here. Notice I'm in the tomorrow group here and certain, sure enough, there it is right there. There's another way to do it too. You can simply click on the email and the follow-up flag is right here in the ribbon. And you'll see those same options are there as well. If I double click the email and open up the message form, you'll notice across the ribbon at the top, there's also a follow-up flag. And yes, I can choose from any of those options there as well. There may be times where you just want to quickly task yourself to follow up on something, bring the car in for an oil change or whatever it might be. And you can simply just click right in here and just type in something. Just hit enter. And you can also see this through the calendar. So let me go to the calendar and just show you real quickly because what you might discover is that your calendar view might look something like this or your calendar view might look something like this. And depending on the view you're in will determine whether you can actually see the, the task list or not. In order to see the task list in the calendar view, you have to be in the day, the work week, or the week. You cannot be in the month view. There's just no room for it. But if you do go to like the week or the day or whatever, it'll be down here at the bottom. And you may just see just a label. And if you see the label, all you got to do is expand the list. And that's exactly what this little arrow down here is, is you just click on it and it expands your list. Now what's nice is I could click right in here and start typing in something as well. I could also take this task and I can just drag it over here or drag it back wherever I'd like it to go. So those are the nice, quick, easy way. If you're just gonna task yourself for following up on something, use this. This is gonna save you a pile of time. But if it's something that's a little bit more detailed than that, then we need to get into the task and we gotta talk about that form. So let's talk a little bit about the form and just kinda navigating the task environment in Outlook. So taking a look at this, I'm on the Home tab right now, and you can see I have the New Task button, and that's going to give us that nice little form here in just a minute. We do have some other options here. We have some different follow-up options, which you saw earlier. But then we have the Current View, so there's some ways of viewing your particular task. Like maybe you want to view your completed or just your active ones. Because let's say, for instance, I did follow up and I did the oil change. When I check this, notice it's crossed off. It's not an active task anymore. And if I don't want to see all of those, let's say, tasks that have been completed, um, I could either do one of two things. I certainly could right click and delete it, but I might want to keep it for some historical value to look on it uh, at, at a particular date and time. So what I might want to do is just look for the active task and notice that that will get rid of that task that has been completed. So we have some different options 
available as well. Simple list, details, really up to you as far as what type of details you want to see. Under the View tab, there are some also some options as far as arrangement and ways of turning off or minimizing this particular pane over here because you probably don't need it. Now, of course, you are looking at your calendar options coming up here as well, which is great, but certainly you don't need this task list here when you also have it right here. And you can certainly adjust that by the, the to-do bar here. So let's grab a new form and see what it's all about. So here's the new task form. And the way it's set up, it's, it's really nice. It's got nice large buttons, very easy to use, and a few buttons of interest will be, well, the task and details, which I'll talk about in just a minute here, assigning the task to someone, marking complete, reoccurrence, so does it reoccur over a period of time? And we certainly can put a flag on there, and we can even make it private if we decide we want to share our task list with others, we can make that private. So here I'm going to go ahead and, let's see, I need to purchase a new copier. So we're going to say the start date is today, right after I get off this webinar here. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And let's say I have to complete it by the end of the month. It's the priority is, well, we'll say it's a high priority here. I could put a reminder on here if I want, but by default, there is no reminder. Now, I want a reminder a few days before that because I want to make sure that I've got all my quotes and all that stuff ahead of time. So what I might do is, you know, maybe a few days before, I'll get that little reminder to pop up and let me know that I have this task to do. And then I'll go ahead and you can see it's due in nine days. I hit save and close in the upper left. And I now have this purchase a new copier. As I work with this, if I am done with it, I can certainly check it. Now let me just show you just a couple of other little task things we can do here. Let's do a reoccurring one. So let's grab a new form. And let's say I have a, I have to print a monthly report. I want to show you what happens if you do a reoccurrence. And let's say it's going to be on, oh, we'll say the start date. We'll say it's uh, going to be this Friday. And when I go to the reoccurrence tab, it's asking me a couple of questions. It wants to know how often it's going to reoccur the pattern and what is the range, the extension of, of time from start to end that this is going to occur. So let's say it's going to be every Friday. It's going to occur every month. We could say on the 22nd or I could say the fourth Friday of every month. Maybe that's when I'll do this. And we'll say no end date at this point and watch what happens when I hit OK and save and close. So here it is right here. Print monthly report on by 622. Let's say I've printed this out so I check it. So you notice it's crossed out. But take a look down here. The next one for 727 is now going to be available. I check that one and now I'm going to 824. So the last Friday of every month it's going to let me know what's the next task that I need to do. And the last task that you can do, and it really depends on your position in the company, but you know, instead of sending an email going, you know, can you go ahead and do this? And then that email gets buried. You might want to try creating a new task and assigning it to someone. So to assign it to someone, say I need to purchase a new projector. So I need to purchase a new projector. The start date is today, and we need this by, let's say, Friday. So it's, it's pretty important. Now look what is happening now. I'm creating this task, and I'm sending it off to someone. Keep an update copy of the task on my task list. So in other words, I can monitor this because it'll be on there. Send me a status report when the task is completed. That means when the person's done with it and they check it off, I get an email back that says it was done. So that's a nice little feature as well, and I'll send this off to someone. Now, I had one sent to me earlier right here, these little Lunch Bite videos here. They want me to go ahead and produce those after. And you can see I can either accept or decline that particular offer. And I'll send the response to the person. So now they're getting it on there. It's going to be under my task, Produce Lunch Bite Videos. And that's a little on how to use task in Microsoft Outlook 2010. Thank you for attending today's Lunch Bite. To view other Lunch Bites as well as other related videos, visit our website at logontolearn.com. Educating the world anytime, anywhere.